Welcome to Straight Shot. Marketing is everywhere. It's around your life. From what you eat to what you wear and where you go. It is a vital part of any and all business. Let's discuss the world of marketing and business as it influences everyday life with the staff of Atlanta Marketing Agency, Reformation Productions, and guests as they give it to us straight. Get ready. Take aim. Steady. Welcome to Straight Shot. Welcome to Straight Shot, everybody. My name is Jennifer Bennett. And with me is B. Zachary Bennett. Hello. And, hello. Uh, Which camera am I looking at? Hello. hello. <laughs> Welcome to Straight Shot. We got a good one for you today. We're going to be talking about something that I think applies to just about everybody listening right now. Mm-hmm. We are talking about videos today and the importance of video. Well, I mean, you know, video killed the radio, the radio star. star. Yeah. So it's a murderer. And then social media came. <laughs> yeah. Killed everybody. Uh, Facebook came and killed MySpace. It's it's an age old tale, really. We make a lot of videos nowadays, don't we? We make a lot of videos here in the agency, and I think we also make. I mean, just we in general as people, we make we, a lot we, of. We the world. We the world make a lot of videos, and I know at Reformation we make tons of videos. We make um, on location shoots. We do in studio shoots, testimonials and interviews, creative concept commercials, mm-hmm. videos, social media. There's a lot of video that goes in and out of our agency. And this podcast. And this podcast is, unfortunately for me, also video. Uh, I don't like being in front of the camera at all. But you're so good at it. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) he's adorable, but he's also so wrong. (laughs) Guess what? Today we have a guest in in the hizzy. We have a guest in the studio today. We have Mr. Braden Orr. Hello. Who we try really hard not to call Brandon because it's actually Braden. Um, it's just spelled wrong. And uh, he's one of the creative team members here at the agency that specializes in videos for our clients. So welcome, Braden. Thank you for having me. Yeah. In the way of introduction, tell us a little bit about your background and um, video and creative and why you're here and why we should give a crap. Uh, so... Uh, like a lot of people my uh, age range, I got uh, my start pretty early on. Um, He's a fetus for those of yeah. you that aren't watching. <laughs> um, I, I remember my first video I ever made. I was uh, like eight years old with my dad's VHS camera and action figures. They probably way more them. than you did. The camera did. Uh, yeah, prob- probably <laughs> uh, at that point. Yeah. Um, so that started my interest in video, and so I spent all of middle school and high school experimenting with. Uh, cameras and everything else. So uh, eventually went to Mercer University, got uh, degrees in media studies and theater, uh, and then got my master's degree in film and television from the Savannah College of Art and Design. And since then, I've been doing uh, video work for social media, marketing campaigns, uh, uh, award-winning short films and music videos, just about anything you can think of that relates to video uh, I've been working on. And he works... Here. <laughs> Where? He works at the agency. Ooh. Yes, yes. We have, so, were lucky enough to snag Braden, and he has been working with us, uh, heading up the creative and videography uh, section of the agency. And I know that I get to sit there and watch him uh, work, which is pretty cool. And if you guys see us out and about, you're probably going to get to see him running around with giant camera equipment strapped to him, which is always fun. He's a big guy, so he can handle it. So, <laughs> so we're happy to have you here. And we thought that, you know, having you here... Uh, really talk about video and the importance of it and so that should be good to have your opinion on that and that segues very nicely into me asking you Zachary yes. the question of the day the reason why our listeners are tuned into this little podcast we're here to talk about video so Zachary is video really important uh, well it's it's not that it's important um, content is important and your story is important and the details are important however video is very effective Uh, it's very effective in communicating all those different aspects which is why like you mentioned before we do so much video nowadays is because it it works video is one of the easiest ways to engage an audience or convey emotion Uh, an image picture graphic is more impactful than text mainly because people don't like to read they just don't. 
I say that all the time, and people are like, what? People don't like to read? No, people don't like to read. Um, they'd rather sit back and be shown in a way that is easy for them to understand. Entertained. Um, right. So, and uh, you've heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm-hmm. Well, a video is made up of 24 p- pictures per second, sometimes more. Uh, it's also uh, referred to as uh, moving pictures. You've heard that before. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just get a lot more with video than you do with a, a single frame. You can change your locations. You can change subjects. You can showcase uh, a change in emotions, things that you can't do as well with a, a single frame. So uh, video is very, um, very effective. It's also an excellent way to tell your story. So as far as a storytelling medium is concerned, mm-hmm. uh, it's very good for that. Whether you're repositioning your brand or just you know generating uh, awareness for your company, uh, a lot of times it's a hero piece that drives customers to uh, your website in order to discover more information. Or it's on your website and it's conveying that story and in, in an encom- all-encompassing and, and entertaining way. Um, another added benefit of using video is is emotion. It's a lot easier to show uh, emotion through video. Uh, video engages three out of the human senses: uh, that's sight, sound, hearing, um, and emotion through music inflection and speaking tones something that you can't do when you're reading that's one of the problems that we have with texting people back and forth is you never know what their their emotion is when they're texting which is why emoticons exist (laughs) so um, video is a a lot easier way to kind of 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 handle all of those things which is why it becomes very effective and very popular nowadays yeah i mean video is also in more places than it's ever been before as well I mean, videos these days is not just what we see on our televisions. And while TVs are still great for, you know, mass awareness, and the reality is that there are hundreds of different channels and platforms that we use every day to get our news and information, to uh, send pictures and to say hi to people. And Mm -hmm. smartphones, social media, uh, theater advertising, in-store video, outdoor video, uh, event booths, public and private uh, presentations, YouTube, tons all across the internet. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of video everywhere again because it is effective, mm-hmm. and that I mean that I, it's one of the things that that I tell people if you if you can't if you have a sign, and you could replace it with video, do. Yeah. Because even if your video is just graphics. Uh, because it would be moving graphics, which will grab more eyeballs, which takes more attention. Um, They're even doing it kind of on the sly these days where, you know, you can have a a, a movie screen, a television screen, if you will, or a computer monitor screen mm-hmm. that is so thin that you hang it on the wall, put a picture frame around it, and it can move, you know, and then mm-hmm. that is such a subtle thing. It throws everybody off, and it's extremely eye-catching. Right. Um, it's matter of fact, they, they have just come out with, within the last couple of months, uh, and it's still uh, relatively expensive, but the price will come down, uh, where you can send direct mail that has an extremely flat video screen in it. Oh, mercy. So you can send postcards that are actually uh, video, which kind of reminds me of Harry Potter and all of the, the pictures <laughs> yeah. on the wall that uh, You know what it move. reminds me of? I mean, that's a much better example than what I'm about to say but every time you have shared that with me it makes me think of Princess Leia being like Obi-Wan you're my only hope and it's like <laughs> those the, like, are holograms little, yeah they, but you know I mean R2 had to send it I know I told you yours was better <laughs> but that's what it makes me think of every single time it's creepy and unsettling well, and super awesome hey, at the same time turning video into hologram will not be far behind Oh, yeah, we already got uh, you know hologram Tupac, Tupac. performing and, yeah. and everything else so, life, man. so we're definitely on the way there Yep. Video is everywhere. And it's, you know, it can be used in a myriad of different ways. And I mean, we can, you can use, you can leverage that uh, idea that video can be put in so many different places for product placement. Yeah. Um, if you look at just even the history of, of television video, that as consumer television grew, it started as a sponsorship driven. Uh, thing, which I mean, it, it still is, is you know, ratings. It all depends on advertisers and th- things of that nature. But soap operas were 
called that because of all the soap companies sponsoring yeah. the, right. the program. So it's the same way. We've perhaps gotten a little more subtle about it, mm-hmm. where it's not, okay, here's a, a break-in of television host saying, this presentation has been brought to you by blah, blah, oh, blah. I don't know. It depends if you watch the Game Show Network. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we've kind of gotten away from that uh, a little bit with a few exceptions. Sure drink your oval team. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> But it's still there. Um, I'm a big fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I don't know if y'all watch it, but every single episode, they don't necessarily call attention to it, but characters use Apple products and they're in the end credits. Promotional consideration sure. by Apple. You know, yeah. it's, it's everywhere. It, a lot of times it's in your face. A lot of times, you know, it's not, but it puts that idea in your head. And you can, you can usually tell uh, if you can make out the logo in a very clear yeah. way. Because if it's not paid for, they will obscure it. Yeah, you can <laughs> so. usually tell if it is purposefully like yeah. label forward or purposefully yeah. label not forward. If you, if you watch uh, another one of the shows that do that is, uh, is The Big Bang Theory. They have um, Fiji Water, which, by the way, Fiji Water is excellent. It is the best bottled water, period. And don't tell me it's all the same because it's not. This is subliminal so, advertising. Um, We're getting into something totally different but, right now. But if you notice, whenever they're walking around with a water bottle, label out facing the camera the entire time. Yep. That's because, you know, they, they paid for product placement. And it's been done in, in places like that where it's not mentioned. But it's also been done in places where it is mentioned. Like, um, like who? Like uh, Google. Google has their own movie. The internship. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, and uh, that's that whole thing. I mean, th- yes, there's a they story. They can thank Xerox for that. Yes, there's a story going through it, but it's, I mean, it's it's a commercial for Google. The fact that people use Google as a thing and not as a company is, th- you can thank Xerox for that because people don't just make copies. They made Xerox. Mm-hmm. Well, like, can you go make a Xerox of this? Well, that was a company. Now it's, I'm going to go Google something, mm-hmm. which I mean what, like 15 years ago sounded like a dirty thing to do. <laughs> and now it's, I mean, you could say, I'm going to go Google something on Bing. And it's, it makes sense to people, even though it's completely ridiculous. Because Bing Google and Google. Google something on yeah, Bing? They're, they're yeah, they're competitors. Uh, besides, nobody uses Bing. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Nobody uses Bing. <laughs> do you guys remember Ask Jeeves? No? God, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Ask Jeeves and uh, Yahoo. Yahoo. Yes, way of the dodo bird. I gave, my, I gave my mother's Discover card um, card number out on a Yahoo chat room one time at three in the morning. Oh, Ooh. thank you for that. Yeah. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, don't don't chat room at three in the morning. Sorry, Yahoo plug. Uh, other places that you can kind of see uh, product placement inside of Hollywood films as opposed to TV is um, for some reason I don't know if Adam Sandler owns stock in Hooters <laughs> or what. <laughs> I think it's but, just a really fitting brand but partnership. Who, if you remember the movie Big Daddy, Hooters yes. plays a he big makes part fun of Hooters that. girls through the he, entire it, movie, and they have their uh, what is it, a wedding reception at Hooters? Yeah, uh, um, adoption and, party. Yeah, adoption party, whatever yeah. it was. And then uh, in the movie Blended that he did, he actually shot literally uh, yeah, part, right of that, part of the office. movie was right outside our office. But uh, in that movie, that again... kind of makes us a big deal. Again, Hooters was <laughs> extremely featured in that yeah. movie. So, um, and, and that, you know, not only was it there and you saw the logo, but you saw, I mean, the name was mentioned over and over and over again. So there's a lot of things that, that people do. Uh, there's also co-branding, like DC and Lego with the Lego movies. Mm, Batman. The Batman Lego movie, that's I mean, obviously DC and Lego partnered together to make a product and it, it made a movie about it. <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, even in Hollywood TV uh, just as well as yeah. commercials Transformers. Mm-hmm. You say Transformers G.I. Joe, a lot of stuff dating back to the 80s. It's right. a lot of, you know, just trying to sell toys. Sure. For yeah. sure. He- He-Man. He-Man, yeah. Yep. A, lot of, a lot of stuff from Mattel and Hasbro. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And now there's coming out. What what is it? The Pokemon. The Pokemon movie. Detective. Yes. <laughs> I'm uh, very excited all, about all that. Based on on I'm toys. Embarrassingly excited um, about that. Please don't let me down, Ryan Reynolds. If if I tell you if your if your toy your product gets to be big enough to be featured in a movie, all that yeah, means is you you're going like to sell 
tons more products. We have Deadpool, <laughs> like, voicing it. Yeah. People that are hot right now. And, you know, uh, Ryan Reynolds made Deadpool a few years ago. Deadpool 2, Deadpool 2 and a half or whatever it is. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. I mean, and, and you know what, Braden? You're absolutely right, though. A lot of this stuff in the 80s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot in the 80s. 90s, too. You know, Wayne's World is a big one. Um, for all of my... Wayne, Wayne's World makes fun of it. Right. For all of while my still taking advantage kids. of it. Right, while still taking <laughs> yeah, advantage I mean, of they it. They, they, they still get the paid. <laughs> For all of my 90s kids out there, or those of us that just really love the 90s, Wayne's World was, I mean, and if you haven't uh, seen it, check it out if you want a good laugh as far as what we're talking about with this. You know, Wayne, he runs this cable network show, cable access show, and they make a point throughout the whole movie at, to make fun of different various products that they're hawking in front of the camera, breaking the fourth wall, as you would say, looking right into the camera. And he would have like a Coke, you know, Coca-Cola or Pepsi and um, can, and he would be drinking out of it, label forward. Oh, this is and delicious. Ding. <laughs> you know. And, and Reebok, where he's completely laid out in, in Reebok clothes. Yeah, he's like, what are you desk. talking about, Wayne? He's got like the headband. Like and people the, just do so stuff for money, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sellouts, man. Sellouts. You know, and it's a fine line now between selling out and having an endorsement deal because you know we've got these athletes and stuff um hawking products all mm -hmm. the time um it's it is interesting and i know that we'll get into talking a little bit more about this in a minute but it's actually quite interesting that um we have celebrities that you know that are celebrities for other reasons maybe they're athletes or actors or models and then you know they're approached by brands to say hey you're already really famous Will you want to wear our you know nikes and parade around and da, 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 and sell our product that way and you know have, do a nike commercial and not do a wear this in your next movie and they say yeah sure and now it's actually turned around to the other way where we're asking complete strangers hey I'm going to, you know, make you wear a whole bunch of Nike gear and you as an average Joe are going to get on video and talk about how amazing it is mm -hmm. and I will pay you for it. Obviously that sounds an awful lot like a, like an actor or, you right. know, like an endorsement spokesmodel, yep. but then that person becomes what we now call an influencer. Yeah. We, That's a job. <laughs> we do that, um, a, a lot now and, and actually, I mean, people make fun of Kim Kardashian all the time. Yeah. But you can laugh all you want. She owns everyone. I mean, that's that's how she really made her, all her of them. impact. Yeah, Kyle, Kylie Jenner. She she became um, famous for it's like Paris Hilton, who's famous for what her daddy did, not what she did. And then, uh, that's but, but not why they, they were famous. Yeah, so, well. so, so, so I can think of one other reason why. <laughs> There's but one other. Once, speaking of the importance of video, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> But yes, you can, they, think that, you can think that right there, Kim Kardashian. The once they, well, yeah, because true. Uh, <laughs> but when, once they have notoriety, no matter how they got it, then uh, they can market on that by selling themselves as a, a canvas, as a, a product placement. So instead of, of putting your product into a movie, you're putting it on the influencer and then they put it in there, all their videos that, that they do. Because most of these have come from, you know, Instagram and and uh, YouTube. YouTube's really big in that, and that course is a video platform. Snapchat is another one. Um, but there are a lot of influencers above, I mean, those are the, the big ones, right? Uh, Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. and, um, oh, there's tons of them. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a big thing right now. It's a big yeah. career But you trend. can you could find influencers that are in your, um, in your your local uh, area, uh, just figure out who. And usually, usually it's somebody young, somebody pretty, you know, or or a, a local celebrity that has a huge following, and then you can approach them if you do have products and, and talk to them, and that you will negotiate something with them for uh, leverage their for doing followers. That. Um, yeah. th they won't. You won't pay as much as you would Kim Kardashian, and if you're the influence, you, you will not make as much as if you were Kim Kardashian. But um, yeah. that is another way that they, um, you know, use video in in business and marketing. So a lot of these influencers and stuff that you're talking about, I mean, they get their start on you know because of social media. Social media is on your mobile phone. It's in the palm of people's hands. You know, right. it might be on their iPads. It might be on their desktops. Well, let's face it, it's mobile. It's with you everywhere you go. People and live out of their phone now. Absolutely, and it's wherever they are. And in order for brands to be seen, they have to meet consumers where they are. Right. And um, that means utilizing all these different kinds of media platforms. 
to uh, and and formats really as they relate to targeting their specific audience. Yeah, which means using mobile video. You're absolutely right. And uh, one of the things that's that's really made that possible nowadays, where it would not have been possible ten years ago. Um, it wouldn't have been possible five years ago because cameras were not as good. But uh, the cost and the availability... So shout out to the iPhone 4, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> cost and, and availability has changed a lot. Uh, it used to be that video was just way too costly for, for small business or for these YouTube people. They, I mean, they, very few people were on YouTube at the time because of, of the, the cost was, was too much. But production costs have come way down to the point where nowadays... Anybody can make a video. So now it's a question of how well can you make a video? Before it was that no one had the, the tools to, to make a good video. Now it's that not everybody has the skill to do it. It's kind of a, a shift was made. So, and the same thing kind of happened with the, the, the print industry. Um, once technology moved where you could have a home or, or office printer, then anybody could make a flyer or a brochure or a piece of collateral. However, then we discovered that some people just, they just shouldn't. <laughs> so, um, just, lack, just know. Just lack know. Of, of creative skill and, and being an amateur uh, really started to, to come into focus once the, the technology was there. Then it really showed that the, you know the how important the, the skill was video is now the the same way um, anybody can go out and you know take their you have a, a webcam on your uh, laptop you could shoot video with that um, but the question is what are you going to to do with it you know what story are you going to tell there's so many things that are involved in that yeah and before and before everybody runs out and tries to DIY all of their video <laughs> efforts for their business there's a couple things to consider here. Now, yes, it is true that uh, since the, you know, well, constant perfection, because let's face it, it's not perfect, but the constant perfecting of camera phones and mm -hmm. GoPros and very small handheld on the go DSLRs uh, with Canon, nice Canon cameras and things, it does seem like it's much easier and much more user friendly for people to take their own video right now. Um, iPhones shoot 4K. They do. They do shoot 4K, but not everyone knows how to handle such high resolution uh, footage. Most people don't even know how to get it off their phone. Most to people, be or you. you know, they might come, they might get a phone, and they don't realize their phone does shoot 4K. Or you know what? A lot of our video, or a lot of our listeners, probably don't even know what that means. 4K. Right. And um, so I will say, and I'm going to have Braden break it down here for a second a little bit about stuff like that, because we can get really lost in a lot of that vernacular as well. But the one thing that you also have to understand is even though they're making it seem much more user friendly, all that really means is the video game in and of itself has all stepped up a notch. So although things are becoming a little easier for you at home to do, now that just means a lot of really awesome video is being shot. So that means that even though you might have the ability to do it, editing it, color grading it, really coming up with a great story, knowing what to shoot, developing, engaging uh, concept, all of this is skill. And so, you know, my eight-year-old can point an iPhone at me, <laughs> and he does. And he always, without fail, manages to get the worst camera angle or, or stick his finger, ever. To stick his finger in the corner of the, of the video. I mean, he's like, Mom, I'm going to capture you walking into the kitchen. And I say, oh, sweet Pete, please don't do that. And then the next thing you know. It's because he's, he's short. So. He is short. So <laughs> I basically, my I just have this ginormous butt. And it's like the video is of just my worst angle ever walking into the kitchen. And he's so proud of himself because he did it on his own. Congratulations, eight-year-old. You DIY to video. The more easily and accessible these things are for people, that just means that the game has changed. The game is now upped. And you need to keep pace with the people that are professionals that are still using the same things you are. So just because it's easier for you doesn't necessarily mean that you can even get the footage off of your camera properly. Yeah, I think a good example is actually this podcast because we essentially here have a five camera setup. And so trying to set up five cameras, going a little behind the scenes here, um, <laughs> that, you know, trying to set up five individual cameras is is costly. We use five iPhones. We and, do. And, and I'm guessing most people probably wouldn't be able to tell that. But the thing about it is it's not just, okay, the iPhone's made a lot cheaper and a little bit easier to set up. Sure. 
but it takes skill and knowledge to be able to set it up properly and be able to get that result that you want. And it's always a learning thing. You're always learning yep. more as you go and kind of fixing errors as you as you come across them. But yeah, it's that that skill is what's going to end up making the difference. The accessibility yeah, is great. Matching the but, cameras, right. matching the audio. And at the end of the day, it also just kind of boils down to the content and the story have to be rich as well. You can't just point a camera at something, capture it, and expect it to tell the story on its own. Well, a lot of it's environment, too. Because like you were talking about with here, we, we are in a, a studio environment. The lighting is controlled. The audio is controlled completely. I mean, you can see the microphones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's a very controlled environment, in which case we can shoot with the, all of these these iPhones, which still most people don't have five iPhones right. lying around, <laughs> um, but it, you have it's, a, uh, an obsession with the hoarding iPhones. <laughs> well, it's it's for this setup. It's 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 practical for what it is because this video that we're shooting here today is not going to go, uh, you know, on a big movie screen. It's not even going to go on, you know, a big screen TV. Most of you will watch it from your your laptop, your desktop, or from your iPhone. So it's, again, knowing which tools to use and, yeah, and, and when. when. If we're shooting a commercial, we would not do it with the iPhone. Now, the lower cost with all this um, video stuff does mean that you can afford now to have professionals help you, whereas before you might not have been able to. So not that you should take on doing any of all this yourself. I mean, again, you need, you need someone that's got skill, someone that's, got, that's trained in what what they're doing in order to get you that video. Like let's say if you own a restaurant and you want, you thought, man, it'd be really great to have a video of the food coming and going out of the kitchen or landing at the table in front of a customer. And you know, I don't want it to just be any old food. I want it to be that, I want to see the sizzle on the steak. You know, I really want whoever is watching that video to taste the vegetables in the salsa. Can you tell I want Mexican food? <laughs> anyway. So you might have thought to yourself, man, I would have really loved to have that, but I just couldn't afford it. Well, now that the prices of things have gone down, it has made it much more affordable for you to hire professionals to really capture right. that sentiment for you. Right. So you shouldn't. It's not that you should try to shoot that on your iPhone because then it would look like an iPhone video. Yeah, it's not but, capturing the sizzle or the steak. But now you can hire a production crew that knows how to do it for much less because the equipment that we buy is now less expensive for us, which makes us more yeah, affordable Yeah, we can charge to businesses. Yeah. less to the people, yeah. Especially from the perspective of a, a business owner who already has a million different things you know, <laughs> go, going on. So then trying to learn a new skill set just takes more time, mm -hmm. more attention away from other things they probably need to focus on. Um, I know like a lot of people will see like, oh, this camera shoots in 4K, 6K, 8K, and they get lost in these buzzwords when like you said, a lot of the stuff, it's going to be seen on mobile. Right. Your, your phone's not going to display 4K. Um, a lot of people, most people don't have 4K TVs. So it's not getting bogged down in those details and learning you know, how to uh, traverse that area and getting someone who knows how to do it. And it'll probably end up costing you less in the long run because you have an expert who knows what they're doing. Right, right, absolutely. And aren't there some things, Braden, that people can do on their own? Um, that we kind of I, there are a couple things that we encourage people to try on their own. Oh, absolutely! Because, uh, like you said, the video is so much more accessible now because everyone has a camera in their pocket, and we're talking about like commercial content as far as you know, uh, product videography, showing off something like that. You want it to look as good as possible, but if you're just connecting with your uh, customers, um, whether it's like a, a live video or you're doing an event and you want to share a uh, 15 second story on Facebook or whatever. You don't need to bring in a camera crew for that. No. You can, I mean, hey, I hey mean, we're going to follow you to lunch every day. I'll be more than happy to show up at your P A R T Y and capture some. Hey, if you want to hire story. us to do that, we'll, we'll do it, but it's not really necessary. You know, that's something you can do. And people aren't going to look at that and say, oh, well, this wasn't shot in 4K, so this is not a business I want to support. No, they look and say, oh, that looks great. They connect to it on a more personal level because sure. social media, I mean, that's what it's all about is connecting person to person and they view it in more of a personal way. So yeah, we do, we, we encourage you to, to do that, that, those sort of things. Um, one of the things about social media that's um, uh, very big right now 
you can see Will Smith doing it right now, doing a very good job of it. Uh, if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, we have um, the radio uh, disc jockeys here. They're not even disc jockeys anymore. The the talent that's on radio shows nowadays. <laughs> they, Morning hosts. <laughs> they uh, they do a lot where you can watch them. You know, as they go throughout their day, a lot of celebrities, Kevin Hart, do, do it where they're you you know whatever they're doing during the day, they want you to connect with them, so they will iPhone themselves all day long for Instagram or for um, Facebook Live. I know The Rock does a lot of stuff like that. Just yeah. so you personally feel connected to them. It does. It puts and, like a personality with your right. product or with your company, especially if you yourself do go out and market your company. If you're, if you're hitting networking events or you know, you're in front of the business, not behind and quiet. Mm -hmm. Like if, if people can't associate you with your product or business, do it. Get on social media. Put these Facebook Lives, these Insta stories out there so that as long as you are censoring yourself and are aware of the <laughs> image you are portraying to everybody. But I mean, if you do it in a responsible way, it can really elicit a wonderful sentimental attachment from that's, the audience. That's really the, the biggest warning with kind of doing that yourself is you take that responsibility on. And uh, you want to make sure that you know what you're doing and you want to make sure that you know how it's going to impact your business. Because if you get it wrong, you could hurt your brand. So you have to know what your brand is, know what you're going to do. Um, like I said, we encourage people to go out and, and do these um, these Facebook lives and the Instagram stories and all of that themselves. But we give them advice on you know how to do it. You know, make sure you're doing it this way. Make sure you don't say this. Make sure you, then they can shoot it themselves because they have the guidance of a, a marketing professional to kind of make sure they don't crush their business at the same time. Um, yeah, how many times have we seen a like restaurant owner, bakery owner respond to like a bad review in a oh, way yeah. that just makes it go makes way it 100 worse? Makes a, a yeah, ton worse or salons. Right. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think this all kind of boils down to one thing that you will always hear time and time again when talking to new business owners, any business owners, existing business owners. Good business decisions mean planning. Plan this stuff out. Right. Give it some forethought. Look ahead. You know, ask advice. You know, channel a mentor or something like that. You know, um, I don't know. Do do whatever you need to do to really plan and strategize how you're going to present what you're going to say. Nowadays, with more and more people consuming video on the go, you know, one of the things that you have to consider when you're pre-planning all of this. Is what is this going to be? What what is this video going to be? Where is this video going to be used? What platform am I going to use it on? Is this for uh, Facebook? Is this for like social media? Is this for you know Comcast? Is and and sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we shoot a video and we hope we can you know set it, set it in our budget to do it in multiple different platforms. But one thing that's really important for you to understand is that each platform that you decide to display the video can have its own uh, dimensions and uh, different types of requirements. So you need to think ahead of time about where this video is gonna be and shoot it accordingly. Yeah, most video is shot in 16 by nine. Most people don't know what that means. <laughs> landscape. Um, that's landscape. Like the way ways. that a TV is. Yeah. And white, um, white screen. Wide screen. Yeah. It's not four by three, not the old no. square box TVs. Yeah, yes. right, right, right. <laughs> if you ever take out any of your old DVDs and you, they're all square, that's that's four by three. This is 16 by nine. <laughs> so uh, most videos shot 16 by nine landscape. However, uh, with Instagram, it takes uh, vertical video for uh, for stories. So, and a lot of people are, are changing into th that format, which is nine by 16. So nine by 16. <laughs> and those are, yeah, and those are ratios. When right. we say 16 by nine, that's a ratio. Yeah, but you also have to worry about how big the file is. Mm -hmm. You sure. have to worry about the quality of the file and things like that. They also have different length limitations. You know, mm -hmm. some some will let you go 15 seconds. Some will let you do any amount of time. You know a little more about who does what. Yeah, uh, it's, it's interesting because they're so different. So if you're, you, you know, you're doing a piece that maybe it's a, a 10 minute video of of you discussing something or it's like a recording of an event or something like that, mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to put that on Twitter or Instagram. Twitter has a, uh, I believe it's a 140 second uh, limit. 
Um, they used to tell and, us how many letters we could put in. Yeah. <laughs> they still do. They still do. But like something like YouTube has a, a 12 hour limit. So you're free sure. and clear to, you know, as long as you're That's within. because the, we're only on Instagram but, or Twitter for one minute and 40 seconds worth of attention span. But we can YouTube all day. Right. <laughs> That's the thing. YouTube is more on like binge watching content, whereas Twitter is very, it's very succinct. That's why you've yeah, got the character limits. Fast food. So it makes sense that they try to keep it brief. Snapchat especially, where you have, you know, a what, 10, 15 second uh, snap. And Snapchat really is why vertical video went from, God, everyone turn your phone around, please right. shoot it the right <laughs> way, to now Facebook has vertical video, uh, mm-hmm. Instagram has vertical video. All of them have that. And you see, like, within apps, when you have, uh, you know, interrupted, when you're playing your game or whatever, and it's interrupted by a video ad, a lot of times it's a vertical video as well because they know people aren't going to want to turn their phones because like we said, we're bringing content to the consumer. Making it as easy as possible Exactly. So they don't have to flip their phone. They can just keep it right Right. side up and see everything you want is your ad to be annoying for somebody. The the other thing to to know is that uh, 85% of most of the videos that are shown on social media are consumed without the sound on. So uh, grabbing somebody's attention visually, using captions, uh, actively prompting um, uh, viewers in order to switch their their sound on, or ensuring that your video makes sense without <laughs> audio <laughs> with it, That's all of tough. that is going to help you to, to make sure your uh, campaign uh, succeeds. Again, uh, audio is something that's very uh, instrumental in video work, obviously, but just you know some some people just they they don't they're laying in bed and they don't want to wake the person next to them or or you know in a they're, business meeting they're, yes <laughs> they're doing more something you're in your not, cubicle not and your boss thinks you're working and so they they have the they have the sound off and because we, is it the way that we want them to consume our content Mm-mm. no but we have to adapt to them yeah not, and you you actually just now touched on it where um the idea is if you if you are going to uh, understand that your video might not have audio playing with it at first, you have two choices. You can proceed with, you know, maybe just having music. Like, if you guys have ever seen a video, maybe in your social media thread, where um, you go to hit the sound on and it's just music, those are people that are taking the gamble that you're probably watching this without sound. So they're not investing in a lot of storytelling. They're not investing in a lot of, uh, you know, a verbal. Yeah, they're relying on the visual aspect. Yeah, but should you turn the sound on? Here, listen to some classical tunes as you watch, you know, goats jumping off of things or whatever it is. Um, you can take the gamble that, um, you know, your ad will be seen without sound. And if you do take that gamble, what does that mean for you? Well, one thing that means is, like Zachary was saying, you have to have striking images. Things that make people mm-hmm. stop scrolling or stop doing their chores or working or whatever it is that they're doing to be distracted. Super striking you images, have to have some flashing, really, yeah, something, colors. Um, you know, something striking, something that makes people want to watch without sound. The other thing is, how cool would it be if you had planned on that with the intention of coercing that person to turn the sound on because they're missing something. Right. If all of a sudden, you know, if you're scrolling through your social media and you see a, just a really striking image of a, an elderly gentleman sitting on a park bench and there's a close up of him and it's, you know, and you're just kind of looking at it because, oh, wow, that's a close up of an old guy on a park bench. I wonder what this is. And it's captivating in some right. way because it's a beautifully shot, beautifully lit, perfectly, you know, um, it makes them curious. Zooming yeah. out and everything. And then all of of a sudden and you're watching the video and then all of a sudden he starts to speak now you maybe you know people are around there are, are reacting to this person speaking and you're like what is he saying now you can put subtitles down there you know you can make it like that so people can read along but it's probably going to prompt that person to want to turn their sound on mm-hmm. to hear what that gentleman is saying or to hear how that gentleman sounds saying what he's saying and that's pretty cool if mm-hmm. you can actually elicit that kind of engagement from a viewer a lot of times what I'll do on uh, on Facebook in particular is they have it where you can save the video now so it used to be I would share it to myself so I could watch it later when I was in a place where I could have the sound on but now I'll, I'll save it and then go back and uh, you know when it's not 3 think, o'clock in the morning when I can't that. sleep I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be able to to listen to it then um, there's also other things that you need to to remember when you're you're putting your your video together guys all of this stuff takes 
thought. There's there's nothing that's done with communicating your business, be it you know video, web, carrier pigeon, whatever it is. All of it has thought uh, put in it. Uh, but another way that that you need to thing that you need to know is there's certain types of content that work best uh, from a creative standpoint. So there's various types of humor, uh, tragedy. Uh, you know, don't forget that you, how you tell your story matters. Most of the time, simply sticking a camera up in front of you isn't going to be the best way to convey your uh, your message because you're not taking advantage of you know invoking emotion and, and getting people invested and all you're just standing there yes sir blah 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 blah, blah I sell tires you know it, it's not and that that's not engaging you know if you want somebody to sell your product find the person that has the most personality the person mm-hmm. that is engaging to watch the person that is quotable the person that makes that other people stop and watch but the caveat is you have to train them on what to say and you got to plan <laughs> ahead so that they say the right thing and they represent your brand the right way and all that stuff. Mm. And then it goes for you too. If you're the business owner and you want to um, sell your own product, you know, there's no shame, first of all, in admitting maybe you're not the right person to do that. If you don't think you can do it, get somebody else to do it. Um, but if you feel like, you know what, people associate this with me, I think that I should be the one in front of people. Great. Plan it out. Rehearse it. Grab a hairbrush, sing in front of even, the mirror. Even when we, because we were talking about the you know news reports. Even with that, you have the 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 producer or whoever it is that's directing that on location shoot, and he is going to say, "I want this guy. Have him say this." Have, and he's doing all of that on the fly. So uh, even uh, to support your point as far as planning it out, he's planning all of that out in real time in his head. So they're like, "Get that guy that you know looks like he was." raised in a bar and put him in front of the camera because, like you said, that's shocking and people will go, look at that guy on TV. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes viral. And then everybody else is saying, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. You know, to your point about the uh, captioning on, on videos and sound off, it, it's funny because earlier we were talking about people don't like to read. Right. And, and it's funny because most people have the sound off on videos and so you have to rely on captions, mm-hmm. which means people are reading. That's true. Um, so they can they read. They can read. They may gotcha. not like to, but they can. <laughs> um, no, it's it's interesting because... And uh, they, we don't have phone conversations anymore either. No, exactly. It's all via text. Yeah. And not only that... Um, we kind of went through it more than probably today's generation of, you know, your shorthand, you only get so many characters. And so, you know, C U L eight R, you know, (laughs) now it's emojis. It's not even just emojis. It's gifts. We had an entire conversation today (laughs) with just gifts. I might have sent Braden a gif of a man riding a piece of, uh, pizza like it was a horse because uh, we were going to have pizza for lunch. <laughs> that was that was all I needed to really send him was somebody riding a piece of pizza and they were like Got it. just like done we're done we're good. And see being able to interpret what those you know icons and phrases mean you know you have to have a comprehension of language that I would say older generations may not have the same comprehension. I won't say it's better or worse, but the same level of comprehension. So. Um, you know, being able to present those videos, you know, either with words or with information in a quick way, especially on social media where you have to pretty much be in and out quickly. It's got to be done in a way that everyone is going to be able to grasp it. And I think people will grasp those kind of very short messages because they've become accustomed Mm -hmm. to it. It's a meme generation. Exactly. I was just going to say that. I'm so y'all can't, you guys don't know, Braden's pretty young guy. I mean, he's, he's gone through um, graduate school and everything. So he's not like super young, but he's younger than I am. (laughs) And um, in in our generation, my generation, kids that were, you know, born in the seventies, anyway, the, you know, you know, and you, you know, your children come home from school and they're repeating some sort of catchphrase or something that they heard on somebody say on YouTube. And, oh, you know, you don't understand. It's a new dance or, you know, you know, what is it? Damn, Daniel, something about his shoes. Right. What? I don't even know. Backpack kid. Like what? Anyway, so there's all this stuff coming home and Zachary is now doing the floss. The floss. Oh, that just happened. And I'm so glad we got that on video. Hopefully all these are good. But you know, um, I'm doing it sitting in a chair. With, I'm hitting all my cables. He's chair dance flossing. <laughs> it's it's also important that pandering is frowned upon. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you really want to meet your customers, your patients, your clients, where they are, know who they are. Are they the younger generation? 
Because if they are, you know, you might not have to spend as much money in copywriting as you think. <laughs> but, you know, along the uh, along the lines of shorthand and, and emojis, which, let's face it, they're pictures, you know, and GIFs, which are video, which well, are video, yeah, video yeah. elements, um, things like that. Along with all that, that's that's dealing with the next generation of marketing. And that, in and of itself, is an entirely different monster and an entirely different podcast. Oh, yeah. So it's we'll true. handle that in a podcast down, uh, hopefully very soon, and w- with your help. And we've got another young lady in the uh, office I might drag in. She's even too. younger than me. Yeah. If it's even possible. <laughs> and so... Um, oh, we, we have millennials and iPhone generation and... I think they're and, called Zennials, millennials, and um, what am I? I'm a Zen... I don't know. Mazzani. All I know is I feel more and, and more like just, my own parents every day. Hey, you nerd kids, get off my lawn. What am I? I'm supposed to be a zenial. I'm a zenial. I don't know. No, wait, that's the... I, I don't know. I, I, I'm lost. I am definitely turning into that get off my lawn guy. He is a, you are a get off my lawn guy. <laughs> one day we had to walk up hill both ways in the snow for five miles. Here's, here's my pop quiz for those that are listening to the podcast right now. What does... S M H mean? If you get a text message that says S M H, what does it mean? What does L O L mean? What does <laughs> that, was, I'm sure the, that, was, that I'm, was not as fun to show on the? I'm sure the audio listeners dude, appreciate you know, the mind meaning. L O L is actually changing too. It's not laugh out loud anymore. Oh, I uh, haven't heard this. What is it? It's um uh something else. <laughs> It's, um, Clearly, you're not part of that generation that it's caused the, the change. I'm gonna need my uh, I'm gonna need my Caitlin to help me What's out. Funny, with that. I had a family member who thought that LOL meant lots of love. Yes, that's and a, so. Well, we, you know, we, I think it's turning into that because ignorance. people are getting. It's like people are saying it wrong all the time now. Well, well it's like, well, Grandma died. LOL. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's not really, quite that. <laughs> well, now, 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 my my son is saying it. Lol. Lol. Now you don't and even I'm have like, to. Wow. They're not letters. It's an actual word. So SMH. Uh, okay, here's the answers. SMH is shake my head. So there you go. You're welcome. LOL is supposed to be laugh out loud. Um, and then. RIP is a new one. Well, RIP doesn't stand for anything. Well, well rest in rip, peace. RIP <laughs> stands for rest in peace and you're just being a kid and you're pronouncing it. But no, it means like four other things. <laughs> now, when I was when I was growing up, we had like, oh, that's bad, which meant good. So, I mean, I get it. Bad is good. Yeah, I'm change, down with that. Changing <laughs> changing uh, language just keeps going and keeps going. Yeah, and you know, now you your teenager if you send your teenager a text that says, um, cheeseburgers for dinner, question mark, they might just send you back the fire emoji. And that means it's good. That means it's good, just so you know. That's another bonus for you guys out there. <laughs> if you get the fire emoji, it's a good thing. If uh, you take a picture of a new blouse and you send I it think- to your teenager and they send back a Fire emoji, that's good. That's a good thing. I think when we do the the next generation marketing podcast, we should have a quiz. we're going to have to go back to this one and because we're talking about it a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, but there's I so know. much more to talk oh, about. But, but, but we're not going to talk about it. No, we're not. We're not. We're going to save it. We'll do an entire episode in the future about the next generation marketing because oh, it's a real thing. It's a real thing because uh, business owners out there, you guys, you're marketing to them, they're mm-hmm. huge. People younger than you, there's a lot of people younger than you. And all those people that are younger than you are buying up your product. You gotta know how to talk to them. You're not gonna necessarily talk to them the same way you talk to your mm-hmm. your peers. So we'll deal with that next time. Um, and also, speaking, uh, getting back to commercials, getting back to video, video. getting back to video advertising, um, TV commercials, like we saw in the Super Bowl, and mm. I'm gonna plug, I, plug a podcast. I, I remember that episode. I'm gonna plug a podcast we did a while back, plug, 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 on Super Bowl ads, check it out, it's hilarious. Anyways, um, people are pushing toward uh, social media now. Like, so you've got, you've got companies that are pushing people toward social media in their television commercials. Yeah, the, the commercial itself will push you towards a social media um, page or campaign or another video. That was done several years ago with uh, the hashtag thing first kind of started. Um, it was you had a short video and then on TV, which then went to like the longer video Facebook. that was on social media. And that's because advertising is you're limited to 15, 30, 60 seconds in most cases. Especially if it's a Super Bowl ad. <laughs> yeah. But the with the internet, you have unlimited 
almost unlimited 12 hours amounts of content that that you can can put up so it does not cost as much to put up a full five minute spot as opposed to if you tried to advertise and do that you you're you know might as well be buying a mini series <laughs> but and how many people have you like talked to around super bowl time are you watching super bowl oh i just watch it for the commercials oh and yeah. so Guilty. You know, yeah so well, that's why now the day uh, not even the day of the game like two three days before right. the super bowl you have like on youtube it's like here's all the big game ads right here where you can watch them and it's like oh great i'll just sit here and watch ads and that's yeah, it. They're, and they're leaking before yeah. Super Bowl time. And the thing about it is, like, not just you know airing during the Super Bowl and redirecting you, but that's when you start seeing more ads from people who aren't even you know mm-hmm. paying for airtime. It's like, why spend millions of dollars when you can literally put an ad up when everyone is searching for commercials? Mm-hmm. You know, sure. it's, it's it just kind of makes sense. Yeah, there, there's several commercials that were out during that time that you never saw again. Because they they made their splash, and they spent. I mean, they spent a, a pretty penny to put it there, but I mean that's what they were were banking on. Like you said, that's true. Um, so with social media or the internet, you, you can immediately take the viewer to an environment that is consistent within the company's brand. So you are on the the company's Facebook page. Everything around the it brand world is of yeah. Brand. Everything about it about it is the uh, around it is the the company or their their uh, their website. Most of the time, it's their website where you know you can click on other things and you can dive in deeper. And it's all me. It's all the company, and it's not my competitors. It's total control. Whereas yeah, and it's like I. I tell people it's your that your website your real estate on the internet make the most of it Mm -hmm. and that's why people are pushing these these other places advertising and so forth they all push towards the that kind of 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 controlled environment because it's less expensive you control it um and uh, the more you have them there usually the call to action is there right call me buy this whatever it's all right there so yeah and i think you know even movie trailers are doing that these days more and more where if you're watching television, um, if you're one of those silly people that still watches television, you know, you'll see a movie trailer that'll literally be a teaser. And if you want to see the whole trailer, you've got to go to social media. And then you can go to the extended trailer. And then that'll lead you to a branded page. Then there's remixes of the trailer. Well, fan-made pages, fan-made trailers and whatnot. And then, you know, that that takes you to a heavily branded page, like you're saying, where you can control every aspect on that. You can also get biometrics and you can get analytics and you can pull information about the people that come there and so much more than you could have ever done just spending the money on 30 seconds worth of Mm -hmm. ad time on on air. Now trailers have trailers on on social media where, because you'll have the the teaser video or whatever, but for about five seconds before it, you have like a mini trailer that's like all the best moments, and it's like, watch the new trailer now. Right. And then it starts the trailer. Oh my gosh, you're right. So commercials for commercials. Exactly, within the same video. It's a teaser for a trailer, for a movie. Because they know as people are scrolling across that feed that you have to grab their attention, and so the first shot of a trailer may be, you know, like a... You know, setting a, the mood a, right exactly whatever. but they start with oh big explosion big moment blah 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 oh let me go back and mm-hmm. stay here and watch this all you need is like a silhouette of Thanos yeah <laughs> and everybody's like oh, oh my god or like uh, what's her button Darian whatever with the dragons what's, what's that show oh Daenerys <laughs> I just made most wow. of their skin crawl. Anyway, all you need to see is like just a silhouette of some things, and you can't. You're hooked. Like you want to stay and watch the tree, the teaser. You want to watch the trailer. You want to watch the movie. You'll absorb anything that you can. You can get, and they'll just string it out for as long as they can. Mm-hmm. Speaking of stringing things out for as long as I can, I think we're gonna take a break for a second. Oh, we are, and um, we're gonna take a break here from some sponsors. Put a little air between everything, and then uh, when we come back, we'll learn a little bit more about video. Video in street shot. In street shot. And well, here, <laughs> and maybe come back for more shenanigans. Alrighty. Introducing Napa Auto Care Centers. Napa, a trusted leader in the automobile industry, has joined together with the top auto repair centers in Atlanta to bring you Napa Auto Care Atlanta. Top local certified mechanics backed by the national power of Napa. Call 1-844-NAPA-ATL or visit NapaAutoCareAtlanta.com to find the location nearest you. Napa Auto Care Centers, the parts you trust, are now the shops you rely on. 
Straight Shot is brought to you by Reformation Productions, a full-service marketing agency in Atlanta, Georgia, helping companies promote and communicate their business in the most efficient and effective ways possible through straight-line marketing. Find out more by visiting reformationpro.com or call 678-825-8086. Reformation Productions. Think in straight lines. Welcome back, everybody. I know you missed us all very terribly. We missed you, too. We were just sitting here thinking about you. Anyway, so instead of going right into the straight shot, which is what I normally do after the break, is that I let Zachary talk a lot. Um, I'm still going to let him talk a lot, because dang it all, if he doesn't have just the sweetest tone of voice. But instead of just letting him go off into a straight shot, since, you know, I think we all kind of agree at the table that video is important, right? So, just spoiler. Done. Have a good day. Yeah, bye-bye now. <laughs> Yeah, as we have five cameras pointed. Oh, video's not that important. It's, not, it's, 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 it's all right. <laughs> Suffice it to say, we all know that video is important. Downright imperative for business. What Zachary said earlier, if a picture is worth a thousand words, video is worth 24 pictures per second. So, so 24,000 words math. per second. <laughs> math. That's a lot. That's Unless you're important. filming at a higher frame rate, we won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> if for more information on that, contact Braden Orr. And Braden is spelled incorrectly. Okay. Um, so instead of kind of resting on that, uh, I'm going to have Zachary tell me, uh, just because I do want to know, what are some of the trends that we can be expecting to see in the future? Because video keeps evolving. Oh, um, I think that 2019 is going to be about balancing old and new ways of thinking, uh, the ways that people think about uh, marketing. And I think that there's two things really um, that uh, that we'll be focused on that we'll see. Uh, number one is the novelty of video is starting to wear off. So uh, now it's going to move from just having video, hey, I can shoot video, to actually having to be good communication. So I think we'll see a resurgence in classical marketing thinking, sound human-based research to better understand our customers, uh, strategic work to better position brands and uncover certain insights, uh, a relentless drive for stronger creative work. Have you seen the, um, sorry, I'm interrupting. I interrupting my not straight shot. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sure. But in, along the lines of the cre the stronger creative work. Sure. Have you, Brayden, I think you have, Zachary, have you seen the new like Taco Bell ads? I have, Jennifer. Uh, well, the point is, is that like, like you were saying with the Super Bowl ad, Taco Bell has really stepped up their commercial game. So like now you've got these ads with like these multi-million dollar looking special effects and yeah, movie plots and, and yeah, and, and, and you know, so they're spending big budget big money on these movie budget type style things. So, I mean, but but conversely, you've also got ads like the Super Bowl ad that we saw with um, Macaulay Culkin with Home Alone. Mm -hmm. So, to your point, Zachary, the, the, cre the strong creative work they're doing there is drawing on nostalgia. Yeah, well, there's, there, you have something? Well, I was just saying that I think it's important to delineate that good creative work doesn't mean high budget work that because I've seen you know I've, I've you know especially coming from a film background I've seen people shoot stuff on like a hundred thousand dollar camera and it looks awful and people shoot on iPhone and it looks pretty good that's right. because you, know? you need skill and, so, and, so, and so but even beyond that where it's you know the creative thinking I think people are willing to uh, ignore some of the the blemishes if what you provide them is enticing or, right. or grabs, their, uh, grabs their attention. Um, there's a great ad from a uh, like adoption shelter that has gone viral multiple times where it's like a really really low budget. They can't even put animals in the in the video because oh, really? it's like they've got like post gonna... post note fish in a fishbowl and it's super low budget. But that's that's the charm of it. It's creative and that's what right. draws people's attention. So even if you don't have the the resources or necessarily the budget, as long as you have that that pre production, that planning, right. and knowing where you want to go with it, mm -hmm. that's what's going to take you to where you want to be. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, great ideas cut through, and that's what we're we're all after is how do we grab the attention, you know, of other people? How do you, uh, you know, create discussion, create dialogue, get shared with with other people? Uh, you know, sometimes um, you know you'll have a great idea, and sometimes it will it will polarize. Yeah. 
Colin Kaepernick, like table the, for one. Uh, again, we're going back to a previous episode. Uh, plug, plug. But uh, however, as long as your values and your purpose is aligned with whatever creative concept you're doing, it's going to build your brand. Again, you can just shoot a video on your iPhone, but that doesn't mean that it's going to represent your brand well, that it's going to do you any favors um, you know, as far as being in the marketplace goes. So back to the, you know, the DIY warnings, uh, consumer devices are limited in what they can do and, and how well. And with the novelty wearing off, it simply needs to be good, professional, well done. Mm -hmm. That's number one. I told Numero you there was two. Uno. That's number one. Um, the second thing is um, innovation and continuously pushing new technology to make creative ideas better. That's the second thing that I think we're going to see. Do not fear technology. Moving forward. Now, uh, some of what I'm talking about, because I know that sounds vaguely um, confusing. Um, mobile video. Right now, uh, we've talked a lot about mobile video. Uh, right now, the majority of commercial video that's in marketplace, um, marketing, com business communications, commercial video, is watched on your smartphone. A recent Adweek survey found an 88% growth year to year in time spent watching videos on mobile. 70% of YouTube videos are viewed on mobile. So because of this, we're going to start seeing more major players introducing vertical video formats, YouTube, Facebook, uh, IGTV. Uh, Netflix is also trying to introduce vertical video for mobile previews. Uh, this is a perfect example of a platform tapping into uh, the behavior of its consumers and trying to maximize uh, that experience. Um, it's not the most optimal way to experience video content. Uh, because movies are made this way. That would but be landscape for those it that are is, not watching. Yes, yes. If you're not watching, <laughs> it's vertical to landscape. You should be it's watching. Like video is important. That's right. Video is important. <laughs> That's right. Um, but if um, um, it's not optimal to watch a movie in vertical format, you need to watch it um, where you have some, some, even if it's on a small screen, peripheral vision it's hard from to shoot the a movie wide that screen. Way, yeah. um, and it, but vertical content is the easiest way to grab somebody's attention while they're on a smartphone because they already have their phone turned that way. If they don't have to change the position of their phone, it's going to be easier for you to, to grab their attention. Mm -hmm. And then once they decide, like with Netflix, the previews are this way, and then once you decide, then you turn your phone. So they're using it simply to, to grab your, your attention. Uh, another, some more new technology, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. AR, VR, and MR are dramatically changing how we display and convey information. For example, the new AR Street View that uh, Google has, oh, this um, is cool. it is a feature on Google Maps that helps you follow directions in real time. It will show you area businesses in real time visually while you're looking at your map, which of course everybody uses GPS now. And there's going to be a lot of, people, lot of car accidents when that happens. Though. Well, this is better done on foot, I think. Yes, there's it's it's actually the the uh, the example that will show. Um, is foot traffic. It's for people that are in the city trying to find the latest Starbucks or whatever. Um, now, in terms of straight advertising, Facebook is testing AR ads in beta, like Michael Kors' current campaign that allows you to virtually try on sunglasses before you buy them via a Snapchat-like uh, filter mm -hmm. with uh, with their product. So you can you can see your own face with their product on it. All of that, that's um, all done through this, you know, VR, AR um, sort of reality that we're starting to, to do. And see, when we had a, a brief little conversation about VR, uh, I mm -hmm. think just a couple of weeks ago, and I was saying like, you know, VR is cool, I love the technology, I love the idea behind it, but I don't think it's that consumer friendly because you have to have a high-end PC, and you've got Oculus Go, but it's not powerful enough, and blah, blah, blah. And then, in the time that we've had that conversation, right. they've introduced a new one that kind of fixes that problem and fills that gap of where you don't have to have a super powered computer and it is more powerful than uh, the Go. So it, you know, it is becoming more and more consumer friendly. And stuff like that, 
um, stuff like uh, video codecs and the ever changing you know uh, video needs for your for your uploads to social media and how different they are. Stuff like that is why it's important to not do it yourself, to go to an outside so source and have exactly because you know like I said earlier, you're already dealing with a lot of stuff, and this is ever changing. It oh, is yeah. constantly being updated, improved, and so to be able to learn this skill and then keep learning that skill because it's going to keep changing constantly. Right. I mean, you it, should quit your job and come work for us exactly. at that point. <laughs> well, we just, we're, we're having to learn how to um, edit in post-production um, 360. Mm-hmm. You know, um, um, I guess it is VR, right? 360 um, so, video, yeah. Yeah, so, which is a lot harder than you think. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure they know that's really going to be hard. <laughs> you you can buy the the camera and the, the cameras look like they came from outer space, but you can you can buy a camera that that shoots um, that shoots it, and that's you know making a purchase, plugging it in, you know, honey, but editing it completely different animal, mm. completely different animal, because uh, you have to stitch all those different feeds together. Um, and that's just one more thing that you would have to learn if 360 video is something yeah. that'll help your business. Sure. It's right. exciting and everything, but it's complicated. Yes. Um, and it's an investment into that technology that mm-hmm. you, that's going to be a lot more cost prohibitive for you to make, or you can get someone else to do it who has already made that investment. And right. then there's like the, I mean, like the series and like, hey Siri, and the Alexa and the home stuff, and now your homes are that's smart. The, that's the next thing is uh, voice and visual search. That's another technology that that's... Und- that's developing and unrolling more and more as we go uh, into the future this year, Get next my house, year. Alexa. Um, we've seen a, a shift towards you know the Hey Siri, Alexa, she Echo type hideous. advice uh, devices. <laughs> um, so we'll start to see this in search options uh, as well, making it easier and more accessible than ever for people to uh, to get information. Uh, already, voice search has grown to nearly twenty percent of all of all searches are done via your voice. Hey Siri. Fine, blah blah blah. Um, it's hey, predicted. Siri, what's nine times seven? Because you know you've all. It's asked predicted that. by by next year to go up to fifty percent. So half of all searches will be done with your voice, is what they're predicting by twenty twenty. Yeah, even TVs now have the yeah, sure the voice smart remotes. TVs. Yeah, with with the voice with the, remotes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. browser based uh, voice search is is coming as well, uh, as well as companies like Snapchat and Amazon making more voice based search for their their e commerce uh, options. Google, Amazon, Facebook, they're already using voice to figure out what you like and to serve your advertising based on what they hear through the microphone of your phone. Um, but eventually it will Big be brother. less it will be less eavesdropping uh, and more more direct, more where you know it's it's happening because you're saying it into uh, the device on purpose. Um, God, that's creepy though. Yeah. Sorry, um, I'm still not bought into the whole Alexa, my house is their house thing. No, thanks. Um, visual search is also interesting. The idea behind visual search is when you want to know about something, you'll take a, a photo of it, and they'll, it'll tell mm-hmm. you more information Pixel about phones do that whatever right you found, um, the best place to, to buy it, the best price for it, that sort of thing. So if you were came in here and you were like, oh, this is a really cool um, mixer, um, and you wanted to know more information about it, you would take a picture of it, and it would take you somewhere that would give you all every piece of information yeah, it would you would need show, to know. And the Google Pixel is really good about that about right now. It. The Google Phone, Pixel phones, they have that. They have that feature right now. That um, kind of AI where you take a picture of something, and it instantly searches the internet for you to find where that is sold mm-hmm. or items that are just like it. So, I mean, if you see a celebrity wearing something super fabulous. It'll not only tell you where that celebrity bought that possibly, or it could tell you where to get something very similar that's yeah. in your budget. So all of this is, uh, is it's on the rise. Like we said, it, it's within the next year or two is what we're we're looking at for this. Uh, the internet will continue to grow in its importance. Uh, companies are continually breaking down that uh, division between digital and physical um, lives, uh, including Realities. including delivery, right? So we'll see less and less physical stores and quicker and quicker e-commerce delivery. Uh, Everyone and everything is being connected online. Stores like Amazon are just completely taking over the retail experience. If you go to Walmart, and I probably ranted about this before, I can go to Walmart or Best Buy and ask for something and they don't have it. And they'll tell me, well, you we can order it online. And I'm like, 
I can order this online. I came to your store because I wanted to pick it up and take it home with me. I want to touch it. <laughs> because I wanted faster I than want two to or three day delivery. Um, so, but we're we're going to that more and more and more and more. Uh, we do most of our Christmas shopping on the internet now. Um, going out Read and that hand, as all of. handling Black Friday and all that, we just don't. Cyber Monday. We just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's really bad when our own reality is now augmented, mm -hmm. because. Video is that important. Video shapes everything that we see, literally. And, um, you know, we always talk about how marketing is everywhere and everything is marketing and marketing is everywhere. Because, you know, when you look around, everything you do and everything you purchase is influenced by something. Well, now you, your reality is being completely dictated by something. And one thing that... By technology. By, by in, technology. in several different forms. It, it tells us what not only how we live our lives but how we as businesses communicate with those people because of the way they're living their lives absolutely if anybody has been lucky enough to experience uh the bandersnatch um movie on netflix what is it black mirror bandersnatch movie on netflix that was a choose your own adventure netflix movie which is again new technology which is new technology which puts the decision making process in the viewer's hands and it's so funny how revolutionary that technology is when really we're just asking people to make decisions about cereal and things. It, they, it's they it's started, archaic, actually. They started that several years ago in the movie theater, where in a movie theater, the audience together, they would have four buttons in front of them, and they would choose things in the theater. And then a computer would say, the majority of the audience wants this, and so it would lead, so the, the audience would choose where Wouldn't you were going. Wouldn't that be great for market research, well, though? Well, the, 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 it's still used. Before you, it's, it's, before it's you still build used, the movie, though. It's still or, used for know. that. But um, the, the problem, why they didn't continue to, to do that is because it was too expensive to install that in all the theaters. Well, with Netflix, it's internet based. Netflix You're just like, clicking on links. This is fun and entertaining. So, We're yeah. gathering well, information about you. And, th and that type of content, I mean, it just in general, Choose Your Own Adventure goes way back in book series sure. and everything else. But especially in, in gaming, you look at uh, text based games on early computers, it kind of started with. with that. Do you go left, right, right, forward, backwards, whatever? And it's now gotten to where video gaming has gotten to the point where everyone's a gamer. It's no longer just nerd culture, geek culture. Everyone's playing games on their phone. Everything uh, is is becoming gamified in a Some way. Some of you are candy crushing right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in that same way, so now people who, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago wouldn't be caught playing a video game, they'll do something like Bandersnatch because like, oh, it's a movie. But they're still interacting with yeah. it. Sure. An interactive video, I think, is going to end up being kind of the big thing yeah, we haven't really talk, talked about, but it's going to be yeah. uh, pretty big. I, I think it's always going to be important for the consumer to feel like they have a choice. Mm -hmm. And I think it brings it all back to marketing in general. If you make your customer, consumer, feel like they have a choice, then, then, then they feel empowered. And the challenge is how do we as businesses influence Yeah, how do we make sure choice? they make the right choice? Yeah, how do we influence You can ask choice? them whether they like Coke or Pepsi, but if you work for Coke, you want their answer to be Coke. <laughs> Absolutely. So how do, you, how do you influence that? <laughs> and so I think that, we, you know, we, like I said before, we know that video is important. And we know that video is evolving. And we know that video is becoming more and more accessible with uh, technology being in the palm of our hands right now. It's also becoming a lot more cost efficient. But the one thing that is also true is that with the evolution of video is also, it's getting more complicated. And um, the game has changed and it's getting more competitive and it's getting more innovative. And so although it might seem like a good idea that, oh, I have an iPhone, I'll just shoot my own ads, I'll DIY my own video marketing, there's important things to really think about that might be outside of the scope of your you know, uh, as a as a as whatever kind of business owner you are, might be outside of your skill set. You know, there's color correcting, there's editing, there's lighting, and then perhaps most importantly of all, there's content writing, there's storytelling, there's you know how is this going to be shot before you even shoot a video? What platform is it going to be on? So I know whether to hold my phone right. upright or sideways, or or if I need to shoot it in 4K and what is even 4K and why can't what is HD and what's SD and why do I care? And, and, and what is 30 FPS and 60 yeah, FPS? What are and my per phone second? says 240 FPS. Yeah, and how do I you know and how long should this be and how long should that be? There's a reason why it's complicated. There's a reason why you know video firms exist because 
with the ever evolving technology, things change. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, it was good to kind of to unravel a little bit of all that. I mean, a lot of the stuff you guys already know, but but knowing that just because you have a smartphone doesn't make you a, a videographer is important. Right. Because very important things are at play, and that's the future of your business. But video, back to the synopsis of the entire episode, yes. Video is important. Long story short. Because (laughs) because video is a very vital way to communicate anything. In our case, as uh, as you know, business communication marketers, to communicate your brand to somebody else, video is the number way, one way to do it right it's now. Emotional, yeah. It is. I had a guy come up to me. I was at a, um, a Q and A expert panel um, that I was on two three days ago, and the guy came up to me and oh, but we we did da da da, and I'm like, video, you need video. Um, you you, you, you know. can spend a lot of time writing that out, right? White and of course, papers and, white and his papers. A, his answer was, "Well, yeah, somebody told me to do Facebook Live." I'm like, "What's your what's your product?" And he's like, yeah, I don't know, "I'm not going to tell you guys what it is." But he went to explain it to me. I'm like, "Nope, Facebook Live won't work for you." Um, but knowing to ask that, and then knowing how to evaluate, that's all what we're talking about. Is how do you make that decision? You have to to know what you need to know to make those decisions because if with his business which i i know is not fair that i'm not going to tell you what it is but if he was to to go up in in facebook live his business he would literally lose people instead of gain people is he a proctologist no (laughs) i'm just gonna take a stab at that one the most important thing to remember here folks is video is important because video killed the radio star video killed yep (laughs) <laughs> I was just wondering how long you were going to sing on that. All right. I think, well, that's all we have today. Braden, thank you for playing with us and everything. Your Anytime. insight is always appreciated. Yep, Zachary, yep. with you, it's always a blast. Yes. All right. Uh, join <laughs> us again next time as we talk about more important and amazing, wonderful marketing things. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. If you found this podcast informative, we hope you'll pass along our web address, straightshot.net to your friends, colleagues, and business associates. And please leave us a positive review on iTunes or on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash straight shot. If you would like to have your question featured on the show or would like to be a guest, call 678-825-8086, extension 300. Or you can email us at info at straightshot.net. Be sure to download the Straight Shot podcast app on your smartphone to hear previous and new shows. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, or directly at straightshot.net. This has been Straight Shot.